All right, I'll tell you what. You guys have been working so hard this semester. We'll give you Thursday off. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, I, I guess I could be here for a couple hours. You know, but, uh, actually, I don't, I don't even know if they'd let me. I think the campus is completely closed. But anyhow, uh, let's see what we're going to do. Um, Job one for the rest of the semester is getting a project done. You know what would make me so happy? Not that that's your goal to make me happy, <laughs> all right? But um, if you would look at something in your project and say, you know, maybe I don't like, maybe I want to do it a different way than the way that you've covered it in class. <clears throat> I don't want, you might say, for example, I don't want to have a grid view to display things. Um, a grid view displays things, as you know, like a table of data. Like this, you know, first row of data, second row of data third row of data, and so on. Maybe you want to display it somewhat different. So let, let's say, for example, that these are movies. Maybe you would, you know, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, um, those are the only two movies, right? No. Wizard of Oz. You know, and that's the way that we've, we've displayed them. But certainly that's not the only way you can display them, right? That's a very straightforward, um, vanilla way to display them, very plain. Maybe you'd want to display them like this. Have a picture of someone with a lightsaber for Star Wars. Have a picture. of Indiana Jones, have a picture of the Wizard of Oz. I actually kind of like that. Yes. <laughs> Me too. And so on. Where you're not displaying them simply as a list of data, you're displaying them in a little more <laughs> exciting way. All right? Well, you know, you can do that with ASP.NET. All right? You can do that with ASP.NET for two reasons. Number one, we've only explored some of the things in the framework. There's other things in the framework we haven't explored. So maybe something in the framework will allow us to do this fairly easily. That's thing number one, all right? Thing number two is that you can always customize stuff that we've learned to do things in a different way, all right? So maybe this could be fairly easily accomplished. So I would, I would like for you to look at opportunities to go beyond what we've done in the classroom. This is sort of my challenge to you, pre-Thanksgiving challenge to you. And do some research on it. Do some Googling. I know something Googling like this is a little harder like than Googling like, you know, um, pardon me? How to make slime, exactly. That's very straightforward. Um, but um, do some research and see what you can come up with. And if you can't come up with anything, then ask. All right? That's part of what this class is. And part of what I would like to see, especially in the past, in the, in the last, rather, few weeks in lab, you know, you think of a lab as, as a place where you're doing experiments, right? So let's experiment and let's try to discover things that we not, have not necessarily covered in the class. Because again, there's so many things. You couldn't possibly cover everything relating to the ASP.NET framework uh, in class. I mean, it's such a rich framework. And we certainly couldn't cover all the things that, um, how do I want to say it, um, that relate to um, how we could customize stuff in the framework, right? So. That's sort of the challenge uh, for the week for, for the project, all right? 
So that's, that's one thing I wanted to mention today. Um, thing two I wanted to mention today I think, by the way, that's a great Halloween costume if you have a couple of kids or like if you're a couple to do the Dr. Seuss thing one and thing two. You just need a shirt with a little circle with the one and the two in it. So I know it's past Halloween, but that's, that's my suggestion for next year. Good idea. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. The other thing I want to talk about is talk about logging out. How do you log out? All right. What does logging out mean? Let's say, let's say I didn't know the answer to this question, all right, <clears throat> which I do, all right, I do know the answer to this question. Let's say I didn't know the answer to this question. How, what might be a good way to Google? What might be good terms to Google? Or we could just give up and Google how to make slime. Let's do that. Another fun one to do is to type in, and you probably, some of you or many of you are probably in this age range, but Google millennials killed and see the list of things that millennials killed. Millennials allegedly killed Al Applebee's. Um, and there's a list of other things too. So that's also kind of fun to do. All right. How would we go about figuring out how to log off? What do you think logging off has to do with? Uh, closing out the session. Closing out the session, exactly. Because we know that if we sat there for a certain length of time, and that length of time um, can be set, actually. All right, there's a default with your web server. Um, one thing that we don't get into in this class is configuring the web server. We just kind of use the development web server. I'm not sure if one of the networking classes you cover configuring web servers. Do you? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Um, but uh, configuring a web server is, is something that you can do, and you can do it for all kinds of reasons, security and so on and so forth. Um, but one thing you can do is you can set the session timeout period. All right, and again, the idea with setting, setting the session, out timeout, session timeout period is you want to balance uh, between resource usage and convenience slash inconvenience with the user, right? If you make the session timeout too quick, the web server is freeing up those resources quickly. So if you made it two minutes, for example, there's two minutes of activity, or two minutes of lack of activity, rather, um, the server will automatically terminate your, your um, session. Well, that's good from the server's perspective. That is, you know, you're not, they're not holding on to resources for a real long time. That's probably bad from the user's perspective because you could be in the middle of something, get up to go to the bathroom or get a phone call or, or just be thinking about something and have your session time out. All right. So that would be bad from a user's perspective. Um, so you try to balance it. I believe the default with, IIS is, is 20, minute, uh, 20 minutes. So if there's no activity for 20 minutes, um, the server will uh, log you off, will terminate your session, your session will time out. Um, you can make it less if it was a very secure thing. Like um, I know like if I go and pay bills, if I, you know, the typical ritual, I'll go to pay a bill, I'll check my bank balance, I'll sob a while, and then I'll go back to pay it. Sometimes it will tell me that it, it is going to log me off, you know, because it's been inactivity. Anything financial like that is probably a good idea to be careful. Like my bank, if you're looking at your bank balance, that, that's not going to be long because security and accidentally leaving it open is a risk. The bottom line is you, it, there's no, like, um, Prepackaged answer. You have to look at the particular application, the implications of leaving a session open for too long, both from the perspective of how, many, how much resources it takes up on the server and um, the, the inconvenience or issues that it could cause uh, um, a user. Um, but anyhow, essentially, when you log off, that's what happens. Your session dies. Your session 
expires. All right, and that's really what logs you off. So, is there a way to set your session to log off? And there absolutely is. Let's look. Let's let's do a Google for session variable or or, or session object uh, for ASP.NET. And let's see what we get because I'll bet it will give us information about. Um, how to log off, plus it might give us some other information too. So let's look at that. We do have to command. We have we have like pretty much a full house today. I, a lot of times a week before Thanksgiving is sparsely attended. All right, so good for you for, for showing up. some background, how we can store a session variable, a lot of other things. Let's look at the class reference. That's not what I wanted. Session starts. When does the session end? On a timeout. Here's how you can actually set the session to. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is old. This is like old school ASP. Wow. This is like pre.net. harder to find than I would have thought. Program, programmatically end a session in ASP.NET. Stack Overflow, I wonder if half of these aren't students looking for cheap answers to their test questions or assignments. And the answer is <coughs> do, 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 session abandoned. All right. So how do you end a session? You say session.abandoned. There is events that exist in the global ASAX file, which is a session on start and session on end, where you can do something. So that's good to know as well. But the answer to the question is session abandoned.
We can also check to see how to have the session um, timeout. We can set it in the web config file. We can set it um, in IIS. So we can set a session timeout in the web config file. So this is setting a session uh, to timeout in 80 minutes. We can also do it in code. So if there's a certain operation on your website that you want to change the session timeout, a good example of that might be if you go into a quiz in Canvas. If you're just logging on to Canvas and checking things out, all right, and, and popping around from page to page, maybe a session timeout of 20 minutes would be adequate. Whereas if you're taking a quiz, Maybe you have to think about stuff and you might be entering the answers and so on and so forth. In which case you might have a long period of, of inactivity. At least from the server's perspective. Remember, typing in your browser does not necessarily cause anything to happen in, on the server. Depending on how the code is written, it could cause something to happen in the server. But it doesn't necessarily cause something to happen from the server. So therefore, um, if you go into a quiz, maybe you would lengthen the time for that particular operation. So in the page load event, you could um, set the time up to be longer on a quiz than it was for the rest of the application. Anyhow, session abandon is how you log off. So if you want to make a, a log off button for your uh, for a homework assignment or for your project, just have a on click event that says session dot abandon, and that should take care of it. All right, on to the main task of the day. We went over last time doing uh, edits on um, a grid view. And as you know, doing things on a grid view is usually very similar to do things on a detail view. Because they're related. All right? They're related as far as they have a common ancestor in object-oriented terms. So they both inherit certain characteristics from their ancestors. Right now, let me draw a picture of what we have. We have something like this. We have a grid view that shows all the orders. We have an add order link here that takes us to a new page where we start out with an empty details view and we have insert and cancel. All right. Right now these lines are editable and I think we can delete them as well. Maybe those are over here, but whatever. Edit and delete. And right now, right now if we click edit, we're editing right on the grid view. All right? And that's all well and good. Because in our order table, we only have a couple pieces of information. But if you could imagine, an order might actually have a whole list of things. And it might be difficult to show all the fields from the order on the grid view, right? If there were 15 fields in a table, you wouldn't necessarily want to have a grid view entry that has all 15 fields in them and allow you to edit that. What you might do instead is, if they click something here, maybe the order number, they get taken to this page and the detail view gets populated with the values from that page. And then instead of insert and cancel, you'd have edit or delete. So 
So here's what I'm suggesting. Now keep in mind you wouldn't have to do both of them, right? You wouldn't let them edit the data grid and have this scheme going on. You would pick which is better for your particular project, which particular table that you're working on. So I'm just showing you two different ways that you could do editing. One right on the grid view, one on a detail view. Now, this page right now is set up to do inserts, which means when we go to that page, we start with an empty uh, text boxes and, and drop downs and all that, and the user has to fill them in. If we were to go into edit mode, we don't want to start with an empty text boxes and drop downs and all that. We would want them to be filled in with the values from the database. In addition, if they were in add mode, would want the selections to be insert and cancel. If they were in edit mode, would want them to be edit and delete. All right? Now, how do we manage this? How do we make it so that some of the time it works one way and some of the time it works another way? Here's one answer that I don't like. All right? We could actually have this go to a different page that looked a lot like this page, except it was in edit mode. I don't really like that, the sort of duplicating our efforts. If we have one page that doesn't add, there's not much difference between a page that doesn't add and a page that does an edit, right? The only difference sort of is, is that one starts with the data filled in with the current values, and one starts with a blank form. So we could have different pages to do this editing, all right? But that doesn't seem like a good idea, because it seems like we'd have two, two things that do almost the same thing. It'd be better to have one page that does both functionality, both pieces of functionality. So it can be used to insert stuff, or it can be used to edit stuff. So here's our task. And let's think about this for a second, if we can think in general terms how we're going to be able to do it. How is that page going to know what mode you want to be in? So if I click the add link, it should go into add mode and the form be empty. If I click the edit link, or if I click the order number, it should go into edit mode and the form be filled in. How's my form going to know what mode, how's my page going to know what mode that I want it to be in? How can I tell the page that I want to be in add mode versus edit mode? Any thoughts on that? Yes? If there's an order ID present, it's edit. Exactly. It's add. If we get to that page and an order ID has been supplied, we want to edit it. All right. If we get to that page and no order ID is supplied, then we want to insert. Where are we going to put that order ID? How are we going to tell page two what the order ID is? Will it figure it out on its own because it's auto-generated? Will it figure out on its own because it's auto-generated? No. It rhymes with Mary Spring. Query string. Query right? string. We're going to give the data on the query string. <coughs> so I'm going to have two links to this page. I forget what I call the page. Let's say I call it order whatever. Both these actions are going to send you to this page. If I'm adding, there's going to be nothing on the query string. We're just going to say order.aspx. If, however, we want to edit, we are going to supply that data on the query string. Uh, we're going to give a value on the query string then this page will be smart enough to know what we want to do. All right? So that's going to be the signal. That's going to tell this page what mode we want it in. 
All right? So we're going to look for a value on the query string. Either there's something there or there's nothing there. All right? How do we change the mode of a page? Right? Insert page versus edit page. Do you remember that? Well, we'll, we'll look when we get there. How about that? We, we have part of it figured out. I always like to, again, this is sort of the approach I take whenever I have a new thing I have to do, is to stop and take inventory and think through, like, all right, this is what I wanted to do. How can this page sometimes be in this mode? Well, if I give it an order ID on the query string, I can put it in edit mode. If I don't know the details, like how do I put it in edit versus insert mode, well, that's something maybe I can figure out later. But at the very least, sort of have a basic plan going into it. Sort of think it through at least that much, whereas you kind of have an idea of what you want to do, and maybe you have to fill in all the details. All right? Um, if you remember back, there was an attribute that we set to put it in insert mode in, to begin with. So that probably holds the key to how we can put it in edit mode. All right. So let's go and do this. Let me download. this application. Did I already do that? Yes, I did. No, I did. Oh. This is what I was talking to people in lab about. How, like, if you like download and zip and unzip stuff, like you get like a million folders. So what I usually do is I like take it out of the folder and put it right on the desktop. So hopefully I won't have a million folders. If you're not sure what I mean, don't. You know, it's not that big a deal. But all right, let's go into Visual Studio. Open this guy up. All right. The things that are important here are order list and order. All right, order is the page that currently adds an order. Order list is the page that shows the list. And again, we have the edit and delete there. I'm going to leave those on, but again, typically you wouldn't do both things. If you had this, you wouldn't need to go and do the thing I'm about to do. But if there was a lot of fields in the order table, then you might want to do what I'm about to do instead. Okay? So, let's look at how this currently works. I'm going to set the order list as my start page.
So I go here. I click to order a new pizza. It calls the page order.aspx. I'm not sure you can see that. I'm going to go into Notepad++. plus plus. So you can take a good look at it. Nothing on the query string, which makes sense, right? There is no ID until we add the pizza. So I couldn't possibly give it um, on the query string the ID of the order that I wanted to add, right? So there's nothing on the query string. That means what I want to add. Well, that's what it's doing now, so that's good, right? What I want to do, however, is I want to have it so that when I click on, let's say, the order ID, I'm taken to that page, and I give on the query string the order ID. So I click on that. In the case of me giving a, a value on the query string, like this, that's my signal that I don't want to be in add mode, I want to be in edit mode. Okay? So, should be pretty straightforward how we do this. So, what am I going to do first? First, I'm going to go and I'm going to put that link on my order list. So, I'm going to go and edit the grid view. This should be review. All right. I'm going to get rid of the pizza order ID, and I'm going to create a hyperlink field. I'm going to put it there. Uh, my hyperlink field, the na uh, navigate the um, navigate uh, URL field. What field do I want to pass on the query string? Well, I want to pass the order ID. Remember, the data navigate field relates to what piece of data do you want to send on the query string? What value from the database or what value from the data source do you want to display on the query string? What do we want to display? We want to display the ID. The data navigate URL format string describes where we're going to put that piece of data within the query string. All right, so we're going to call order.aspx question mark ID equals, and we put in braces, zero braces. So that's the page that we're going to send it to. We're going to send it to order ASPX. And we're going to put it on the query string. We're going to put that field 0. Field 0 is simply the first field in this list because we actually could put several things on the query string if we wanted to. Normally, all you need to do is give the, give the primary key, right? But we could pass other things if we wanted to. So we want to put the ID right here, right after the equal sign. So that's where we're putting in the value of field 0. So in this case, it's going to be a, a, an ID of 18. In this case, well, that's the value that's in field 0. The data text field is what we want the text of the link to be. All right? Text of the link to be. And it will just be order ID. We can format that too if we want. So I could say, and we do it in the same way, edit, delete, order, zero. And that will put the zeroth <coughs> field right there. So let's go and look at this and make sure this part works. 
All right, one piece at a time. So I run this. Fielder property with the name order ID was not found on the selected data source. Why? Is it pizza order ID? It is pizza order ID. Thank you. So I go to change that to pizza order ID. shows the status it says uh, order dot ASPX question mark ID equals 18 now again it doesn't matter the fact that we called an ID we could call it anything we want to as long as the page that's gonna that this is linked to knows that in the field called ID is the ID so we could call that anything we could call order equals or whatever doesn't matter what we call that on the query string as long as the second page knows now, so this page has been handled correctly. The second page, however, is not. The second page only goes into insert mode. So if I click the link for this, it ignores the fact that there's an ID on here. So we're passing the ID correctly, just the way we wanted to. But this page isn't ready to handle uh, an ID yet. So now our work goes to that second page. So we start to work on that second page so that it knows how to handle the ID. All right. So let's go and look at that. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the SQL data source to make sure that my SQL data source is pulling up the right pizza. Because when I wrote this, I wasn't thinking about editing a pizza, right? I was thinking about adding. So I might not have, um, I might not have uh, um, taken into account the fact that this could get something on the query string. So I'll look at SQL data source. And sure enough, I'm not, I'm not using the order ID. What do we need to add onto this SQL statement to make this work? Here's the SQL statement. A WHERE clause, all right? Remember, the WHERE clause is what determines um, what rows we get back. Right now, this didn't have a WHERE clause, so it gave us all of the rows. The WHERE clause filters out the rows that we want. If there's no WHERE clause, that means we want everything. All right? And that was okay when we were in add mode, because we weren't using this in edit mode. All right? So we really didn't need it for add mode. So, all right. So what, do I, what will the WHERE clause look like? Where what equals what? Where pizza order ID equals some question mark. Pizza order ID equals question mark. Absolutely, because in this case it will be 18, but in other cases it will be whatever the ID of that pizza was. So I'm going to go and add to that where... Pizza order ID 
equals question mark. What else do I need here? I'm going to need an update and delete statement, right? Because right now, I have my insert statement set, but since that's all that page was doing, I didn't bother to set the update and delete statement. So, I'm going to say update. Let me go in here and type it in, and then I'll paste it. Update the table name. So it's pizza order. Set. It's always a set at the beginning. And then I have the list of columns. So set customer name equals what? Question mark. Comma. Order type ID equals question mark, comma. Time of order equals question mark. Not changing the primary key, remember. Very rarely do you change a primary key, and certainly if you're going to change it, you probably wouldn't have that built into your application. It doesn't really matter what that number is anyhow, so there really is no need to change it. All right. But we are going to use it on the WHERE clause. WHERE pizza order ID equals question mark. So that's my update statement. What's my delete statement? Easier still. Delete from pizza order where pizza order ID equals question mark. Do we have any questions on either of these two SQL statements? Really no different than what we did before, right, on the grid view. Basic update and delete. All right, and again, you just have to know the syntax. What could go wrong with the syntax? Well, you could you could get a, you know get um, the syntax wrong. You know, forget the from. Uh, the most common error is you get a column name wrong. Related to that is if you have uh, reserved words in your um, I I as one of your column names. And if you, if you even half suspect that, just put brackets around, the square brackets around different stuff. And that will prevent that. So if you don't know if something's a reserved word but you want to be safe, it doesn't hurt to, to do that every single place that you have a table name or a column. All right, I'm going to click Next. Where is that question mark going to come from? It's going to come from the query string. What's the field? The field is ID. This has to match up with how when we created the link, what we call that field. So I called it ID when I created the link. I have to call it ID when I pull the data off the link. Again, doesn't matter. Nothing magical about me using the word ID there. All right. It's just that um, since I used ID when I created the link, I have to use ID here. All right. Next, I'm going to test it. Put order 18. Pulls it up. And I'm going to finish. If I answered yes to that question, by the way, it would have gotten rid of all my template columns. Um, sometimes it's necessary to do that, especially if you add a lot of fields or, or change something or if something doesn't work, um, you have to go in and refresh the, uh, uh, the columns. 
Now, I'm going to run this and it still isn't going to work. All right? And we're going to have to figure out why. So, this is one of those cases where I'm making a mistake on purpose. All right? So, I've warned you. So, I click start. All right, that appears. I click this link. Oh, I'm still in ad mode. What do I need to do to get it to go into the other mode? The mode that, where it will ask me if I want to uh, edit or delete. Write some code. Uh, maybe write some code. That's one of your two choices, right? That's one of your two choices for a generic answer, is write some code. The other choice for a generic answer is set a property. Okay, so, uh, you know, if you give that answer, you're going to probably get 95% of the questions right. Yeah, set, write some code or set a property. Which one do we want to try first? Set a property. Set a property. Why? It's, it's, it's easier because we don't have to write code that right. It's going to be easier. So let's look at this. No, let's look at this detail view. And we'll notice that. me the grid view. Well, good news is we can look at the code. Let's look at that detail view. Default mode insert. All right. That is the property that's relevant here. Right. Uh, I wish I could get to the properties window to um, to view this, but there are two or maybe three options for this. There's insert, and I think read only. I think there's only two. There's a third. I don't remember what the third is. But we can either go into read only, or we could go into insert. Maybe edit is the third. I don't know. We'll look in a second. Second has passed, so we'll look now. Edit, insert, or read only. Now, if I set it to read only, And I click edit, yay, I'm in edit mode. But, what's going to happen when I click this? Nothing. No data. There's no data available because I didn't give a query string value. All right. What does that mean? That means that your answer was right. We have to write some code. We tried setting the property, but that didn't work. All right, so we have to write the code. Write the code. We have to write the code to look at what situation we're in and decide what mode that details view is in. So how do we know what mode the details view is in? Well, if there's something on the query string, then... Um, we're in edit mode or read-only mode, rather. If there's nothing on the query string, then we go into insert mode. So, we're going to write some code. Where are we going to put that code? Always a problem with object-oriented stuff. Where to put the code? Well, in a nutshell, we want it to happen as soon as a page opens. 
So I'm going to put it in the page load event. So I'm going to look to see if there's something on the query string. So if request query string ID equals nothing. Then I'm going to do one thing. Otherwise, I'm going to do something else. If there's nothing in the query string. What mode do I want to be in? Add mode. So, details view one dot default mode equals insert. Except that's not how we represent that. We have to say Details view mode dot insert. Does anyone know what this is called? Details view mode dot, where I get three possible values for it. And why it's better than a string. That's called an enumeration. Um, an enumeration is, is a, a data type that only accepts certain values. And in this case, you can only put three things. Details view mode edit, details view mode insert, details view, detail view mode read only. So I can't put in just any old string, which makes sense, right? Because it's not going to understand any old string. It has to be one of the values that it's looking for. So... Um, this is good for, uh, and these are used a lot when you have a limited number of options for a particular field. I was, rem I was like looking at the old days of, of old school scripting languages where everything was a string and you just could set it that way. I forgot about the enumeration. So if there's nothing on the query string, we want to go in insert mode. If there's something on the query string, we want to go into read-only mode. Now, we might have something that works. So, we go to order a new pizza. Still doesn't work. Do you have to change the default mode in the, in the other part of the code? Is that to read only before? No, because this will this will like overrule it. Actually, the problem is I'm doing the wrong test. I'm testing to see if it's equal to an empty string. I should test to see if it is null. 
And I think I was actually doing a backwards test. Maybe. I don't know. Let's open up Visual Studio again. So if there's nothing now, I want to go into insert mode. So that's right. But my test is going to be as if it's equal to null. Let's try that. Okay, that worked. I click new, I go into insert mode. I click edit, I go into edit mode. All right. Now, we're almost but not quite there. All right. For one thing, I don't see the choice to edit or delete. That's because I forgot to enable that functionality on the grid view. I'm sorry, details view. So, I'm going to go to the details view, and I'm going to say that editing and deleting are okay. I'm also going to edit the template because I don't want them clicking new. All right. If they got into new, if they wanted to do a new, they should have clicked the add link on the other page. So here is strictly for editing and deleting. So I'm going to edit the template. If I'm not mistaken, that's already a template column. Maybe not. I can go into Edit Fields, make this a template column, and now I can go and edit the template and in the item template I can get rid of new and just give them edit, uh, edit and delete. If I run this guy, order new pizza, I go into insert mode, edit, order, I go into there and I can either edit it or delete it. Now, a couple problems going on here. All right. Notice what happens when I go and edit it. I get my text boxes. Order ID, order type ID, that should be a drop-down, right? Didn't we make it a drop-down into insert mode? Yes, we did. Unfortunately, the template columns, we have to recreate in edit mode. So what we did for insert mode is fine and good for insert mode, but if we want the same functionality for uh, edit mode, we have to go and, and change that particular template. Also, there's no validation for customer name anymore. So if I go in and don't type anything in for customer and click update, boom, it blows up. <clears throat> so the things that I did for the template in add mode, so I put a validation in for customer name and insert item mode. In edit item mode, that validation isn't there. So I'd have to go and do that. It's kind of a pain because it would be very rare, I would think, that you would want to have different validation in edit or insert mode, right? If you can't put in uh, a person with no name, right, that's going to be true when you first insert the order and that's going to be true when you edit the order. So I can't. really think of a good example of where I would want a different validation 
after they've entered the order as opposed to when they were initially inserting it. But that's the way it works. All right, and um, again, the, the build-in components, the framework gives you so much um, functionality, all right, built in to the framework that having to repeat that in, in, in two places is really a small price to pay. Really doesn't take a lot to go and add uh, a, 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 what do I want to say, a, a validation for name. Likewise for the drop down for the uh, order type. All right, would have to add that both in item mode and in edit item mode. All right, so we'd have to go and repeat that drop down a couple of times to make it work probably the way that we would want to. Would also have to duplicate the uh, a, um, item updated event, all right, as well as the item deleted event to send it where we want to. So we have a little bit of cleanup to do with this. We're not 100% finished with this, all right. What I meant by that is notice that in we have here the item inserted event. Would have to do the same thing for the item deleted um, event and the item updated event. All right. Time for order. We accepted the date. We'd have to decide what we want to do for an edited order. Do we want to update the time? Do we want to manually let them update the time? Or do we just not allow them to edit the order, uh, the, the time if it's been um, once we're in edit mode? So we'd have to decide what we want to do with that. All right. So the point that I get to hope you've gotten for today um, is that this detail view works in a couple different modes. And programmatically, we can pick which mode we want it to be in. And typically, in this example, we use the query string to identify that. We use the query string to identify if we were inserting something or if we were editing something. I would think that would be pretty typical, right? If you're giving a, an ID to the page, a primary key of something, then you probably want to edit it. If you're not giving any, anything, any ID to the page, you're probably wanting to insert a new one. Yeah. All right. Any questions about this? Um, all right. Um, we're going to do something I rarely do. This will be my holiday gift to you. We're going to end a little early. All right. Sweet. So see you in lab. If I don't see you in lab, have a good holiday, and, and we'll... Catch back, catch you back next week, sort of for the, the down the stretch, the home run. All right, take care. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, sellers. Likewise.